want to praise God. Hey. We've come to lift him up. His name is worthy to be praised.
Today we're going to pray. The Bible says in Mark 11, verse 24 to 25, it says, I tell you that you can pray for anything, and if you have believed, you can have it. And it goes on to say, but and if you are praying and you realize that you have a, a grudge against someone, first forgive that person so that your Father in heaven can also forgive you. And so even as the Lord assures us here this morning that we can pray for anything and in praying and in believing we can receive breakthrough for our health, breakthrough for our families, breakthrough for our marriages, breakthrough for our finances. No matter what the need is here in the house, God says that if we pray believing, we will receive. But the Lord mentions something very important here. He says before you even uh, continue to I uh, pray I want you to forgive a grudge and so that's what we're gonna do before we continue praying just where you are if you can just close your eyes and become aware of the presence of God 
It is a call from God here this morning that we forgive before we even get into our praying for our needs. Just where you are, if there's somebody that you need to forgive, say, I forgive you. Maybe it's your husband, I forgive you, husband. I forgive you, wife. I forgive you, child. I forgive you, mother. I forgive you, father. I forgive you, colleague. Whoever the person is, you can forgive. Because forgiveness is an act of faith and obedience and there is a spiritual release that happens when we forgive those who have sinned against us. Say with me, I am offense free. Say with me, I have forgiven those who have sinned against me. Amen. Give God a shout of praise. And now we can pray. Now wherever where you are, Whatever, wherever where you are, you can pray for anything, even as the Bible says. Out of your own words, from your own hearts, you know, begin to make your petitions to the Lord. Begin to bring uh, that prayer of supplication to the Lord. Tell God what you want. What do you want God to do this morning? Father God, you see us, Lord, as a congregation. Lord, we believe in the name of Jesus. And that is why we are praying. We believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. We believe in the power of the miracle of Calvary. We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so Father God, today we take possession, oh God. Lord, and we pray, Lord God, that as we plead the blood, even as we pray that we can enforce the victory of the cross in everything that concerns us. We can enforce the victory of the cross in our marriages, in our finances, in our, in our, in our, in our communities, in everything that concerns us. In the name of Jesus. Your word says that when we pray believing, we will receive that which we trust you for. Your word says that we can say to this mountain, mountain be cast into the sea and it shall be. And right now we take authority uh, against the mountains of depressions, against the mountain of suicide, against the mountain of violence, against the mountain of sicknesses, against the mountains of divorce. We take authority and we command this mountain to be cast into the sea right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you command the heavens concerning us and you open heavens concerning us in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the victory of the cross. Thank you for the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. They say with me, I believe in I have received my breakthrough in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Hallelujah. What a great privilege we have as believers to pray and to hear, to see God answer our prayers. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Are you happy to be here? Amen. Yes. On behalf of our pastors, Pastor Bert and Pastor Shane, we would love to extend a warm welcome to every single one of you that are here. Also in all our other venues, welcome with us. And if you are here for the very first time, even more so, we are so happy to have yes, you. Amen. And we would like to meet with you after the service at the visitors area. Amen. We also want to welcome those joining us online this morning for the first time. All our visitors, whether it's YouTube, Facebook Live, or my 3 c at Home, uh, Gout TV, or uh, 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 Impact Radio, welcome with us this morning. And uh, please make sure to connect with us on our website. There's a connect button, my3c.tv. Connect. We would love to hear from you, but a warm welcome to you this morning. We have a very, very special week coming up for the ladies. We don't have prayer this week in the mornings, on Tuesday mornings and Thursday morning, but we have prayer mantle. Yes. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Happening on Friday evening at 7 o'clock here in the auditorium. And um, make sure to get your planning in line that you don't miss yes, that. Amen. It is a beautiful meeting every single time. Amen. And then also all the men remember that we have 5 a.m. Wednesday morning pray with Pastor Bert. Can I get a hoo from all the men? Whoa. All right. So let's make sure that we also join there. Get the details from your leader or we ever invited you. Amen. And then also we have translations available. If you want to make use of that, there's a QR code. You can just take a, a picture with your camera. It will direct you to our uh, translation page where you can select from Zulu, Pedi, Tonga, Portuguese, Venda, and French. So you're welcome to make use of that as well. God bless you. Enjoy the service. Amen. 
such a great place to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. In the book of uh, in the book of Leviticus uh, 28, verse 27, verse 30, uh, and we quickly just put up the scripture. It says, "And all the tithe of the land." It says, "And all the tithe of the land, be it the seed of the land, and all." It says, "All the fruit of the tree." It says, "It is the Lord's. It is holy." Just look at your neighbor quickly, right there where you are, and tell him, "It is holy." See, holiness is a breeding place for the blessing of God. And so what you find is that we take for granted, we think holiness is just pleasing God. But what happens is it goes beyond that. There's a manifestation in, in that we experience the blessing of God when we walk in holiness. A good example of that is we see in the book of, also in the book of 2 Samuel 6, 11, we, we speak about um, Obed-Edom. The Bible says that he, he, he accepted to take the presence of God in his home. See, when you speak about the, the Ark of the Covenant, it, spoke, it speaks about the presence of God. So he says, and all the tithe of the land, it is holy. Why? It's because you want the presence of God and the hand of God in your stuff. Just quickly look at your neighbor and neighbor, I want the hand of God on my stuff. See, it's unfortunate for us to go on and do what we need to do because if you read in the book of Malachi 3, it says that he will rebuke the devourer for your sake, which means there is something that's busy nom-nomming at what God wants to bless you with. Amen? See, a devourer, it means it's something that comes and it's there to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But when there's holiness, it means the blessing of God is there. His hand is there. His presence is there. So when you give, you're saying you're giving God access to all that you are. Because money represents you. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you today. You see, Obed Edom experienced the blessing of God in 2 Samuel 6, 11. It says, and he was blessed and his entire household, which means everything that is connected to him experienced the blessing of God. Why? Because the holiness of God was in his home. Your tithing brings the holiness and the blessing of God in your home. Do you have some people in this place who say, listen, I need God in everything that I do. Amen. It's with that conviction, therefore, we give. We don't give because it's a donation. No, we give because we understand that that's how we allow God. That's us showing God that we trust him. So right there you are, as we get ready to give, with that same heart of faith and conviction, see, we, 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 we need to, or we ought to, as we get ready to give, there's going to be a QR code on my right-hand side, and I want to encourage you, you can use your phone, you can simply just scan that, and it redirects you, and you can give how you want to give. And also, please, there are ushers just across the auditorium. You can simply just raise your hand. They'll give you an envelope. They'll be able to assist you. And also for those who want to give through card facility, they'll be able to assist you also at the same time. Those who are connecting with us also online, I want to encourage you can quickly go to our website, my3c.tv. You can simply click on give. You should be able to give and you give you all the prompts and you can give accordingly. Do you have some people who are excited to give this year today? Amen. Ready? Just stand ready with your offering in your hand and your tithe in your hand because you know it is holy before the Lord. And we're going to declare this blessing over, over it today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give because we love you and we trust you. But God, we honor you. We need you in everything that we are. Lord, this tithe represents our heart and how we've made up our mind, God, that you are provider and we will not do anything without you in it. And Father, thank you that even, Lord, even as we bring this offering to you. You say every seed of the land, oh God, it is holy that Lord you bless every seed that is brought, every offering that is sown. Father, we just thank you that in our giving, it's because we trust you. In our giving, oh God, we're saying God, you are our God and we cannot do nothing without you and everything that we are is because of who you are. And Father, this we give in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Are you ready to give? Log on to my3c.tv for cashless donations. Made safe, made simple, made smart. Choose your donation option. Enter your amount and press pay now. Choose one of our easy and convenient payment methods and you're good to go. You can give via credit or check card, instant EFT, or the master pass option. My 
cbc.tv cashless donations made safe made simple made smart fix your eyes on the screen for the qr code In a world rife with social injustice, we believe that there is hope. The Matlaseri Foundation is a registered NPO with various welfare and social development projects. These include the disaster relief food distribution projects initiated during the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Since 2020, the Matlaseri Foundation has distributed over 221 million rands worth of food equating to over 50 million meals, which fed over 532,000 families in every province in South Africa. The Matlaseri Foundation continues to impact South Africa with the mandate of changing the world. We have faith in everyday, ordinary people like you to affect a considerable and much needed change in our beloved country. It is indeed the little of many that adds up to plenty. Become a partner with us today by sponsoring our various welfare projects. Visit our website on www.masaseri.org. Masaseri Foundation. The future beams with hope. Community at large. Our school was graced with a great visit from Masasedi Foundation, which also motivated us. And uh, this is the kind of the collaboration we need with the Masasedi Foundation. I've got children that I'm looking after from our community. I've got orphans and vulnerable children that I'm looking after. So Masasedi is here today to assist us. They are giving our kids food vouchers from Pick and Pay. Yo, we are so grateful. Now I want to say thank you to everybody that contributed, everybody that's making difference in people's lives. We're here because we care. We're here because uh, we want to stand with our brothers and sisters here in this great nation of South Africa. Praise the Lord. We're so thankful to be able to reach so many families across South Africa. Amen. 
Well, welcome to church this morning. Uh, good to have you with us. Welcome to those watching online as well on all of our platforms, uh, YouTube, Facebook, my3c.tv, and also those watching on How TV and also watching, or not watching, listening from Impact Radio. If you're listening on the radio, I promise you everyone here in church looks great. All right, you can just imagine it. Uh, so we're having a great time in church today. Uh, we have a special service where we are having baby dedication today. Amen. So we're excited to do that. The Bible teaches us um, that when the kids came to Jesus, the disciples tried to keep the kids from him. And he told them, he said, don't hinder them. Let the little ones come. They came to Jesus. He embraced them. He laid hands on them. And the Bible says that he blessed them. And we're going to do the same thing today. And of course, we're not just going to pray for the kids, but who knows that as a parent and as the families, we need all the help we can get. Amen. Because we have a responsibility from the Lord to raise up our children in the right way, in a godly manner, and also to ensure that they are raised in an environment that is conducive for them to become who God created them to be. And uh, we are excited for everyone that is here. Amen. So we're going to pray together, church. And um, let's start this side. All right. And what is his name? Alexandra. Alexandra. Okay. Lord, we pray, pray for Alexandra this morning. And Father, we thank you that your spirit will sanctify and set him apart, Lord. And we thank you that this morning we can dedicate him unto you, Lord, and we pray your blessing over him. We thank you, Father, that even at a young age that you will grow in stature and in wisdom. We thank you, Lord, that your favor will be upon him, that he will become a father of nations and everything that you've called him to be. And we pray, Lord, that your grace and peace will be upon his life, multiplied over him and surround him. Lord, we pray for his mom. We pray for the family, everyone involved. And we pray, Lord, that you give them supernatural wisdom and guidance, that in everything they do, Lord, that they will uh, be led by you. And we thank you that in this home, it will be a house of peace, a house full of the blessing of the Lord that will bring honor and glory to your name. Protect them and keep them. And we declare them highly favored and blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you. Congratulations. Good morning. And what is her name? Timo. 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 Okay, let's pray for Timo. Let's stretch out our hands towards her. Lord, we bring Timo before you this morning. Lord, we thank you that right now we can dedicate her unto you and we ask your Holy Spirit to sanctify her and set her apart for your purposes, even at a young age. Thank you, Lord, that she will come to know you and your ways and your presence. Lord, we pray that you will guide her and keep her and help her to become everything you've called her to be. We speak your blessing over her. No weapon formed against them will prosper. And we thank you, Lord, that we can also pray for the parents and the family. And Lord, we pray that you will guide them and help them, strengthen them, provide for them, Lord, so that they can ensure that the family is a place where the glory of God is beheld. And we thank you, Father, that you surround them with your presence. We call them highly favored and blessed of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Congratulations. Thank you. Amen. Good morning. You guys look excited. What is her name? Boabo. Okay. Lord, we pray for Boabo, Lord, and we thank you for your hand upon her. And this morning we dedicate her unto you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you sanctify her and set her apart for your glory and your purposes. And we ask you, Lord, that your blessing will be upon her and that she'll be fruitful and multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion in every area of her life as she grows up. Thank you that she'll grow up in wisdom and in stature and that become all the things that you have prepared for her to be, Lord. And we thank you for the parents. Lord, we ask that you give them wisdom, Lord, and spiritual understanding. Lord, strengthen them to be who you've called them to be. And we thank you, Lord, that this household will, will resemble your glory, your peace, your love, and your joy. And we declare them highly favored and blessed of the Lord. Keep them Lord provide for them protect them in Jesus name amen. amen amen congratulations thank you good morning good and you who are we dedicating both of them okay Peyton and Madison all right are we starting with Peyton? All right, let's stretch out our hands Lord we thank you for Peyton we bring her before you this morning and we dedicate her unto you Lord, we rely on your goodness and your grace, and we thank you that, Lord, your spirit will be evident in her life. 
that you will reveal yourself to her even at this age more and more. Thank you, Lord, that you help her to learn your ways, the ways that lead to everlasting life. And we pray, Lord, that you'll grow in wisdom and in stature. We'll pray, Lord, that your blessing comes to fruition in her life, that you'll be fruitful and multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. And we thank you, Lord, that you protect her and keep her, Lord. We also pray for Madison. We thank you, Lord, that we can dedicate her unto you. And we thank you, Lord, that you surround her, you protect her. The blood of Jesus covers her. And we thank you, Lord, that every argument is removed. And we pray, Lord, that your favor will be upon her life as she grows up, that, Lord, she will get to know you deeper and deeper and that as well your blessing will increase and that your grace and peace be multiplied over her life lord we thank you for the parents that you continue to bless them and give them wisdom lord and we pray lord that you guide them and that every step be ordered of you and we thank you lord that your word will be a lamp unto their feet we declare them highly favored and blessed of the lord in jesus name amen and amen congratulations thank you you can come here thank you Amen. Kiana. Oh, Kia. And Homoto. Okay. Awesome. Let's pray. Lord, we pray for Kia. We thank you, Lord, that we can dedicate him unto you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your spirit that sanctifies and sets him apart for your kingdom and your glory. We pray, Lord, that in everything that he does as he grows, Lord, that he will become all that you've called him to be. Thank you, Lord, that he'll be a father of nations, blessed of you, being fruitful in every good work. We pray that you protect him and surround him and keep him in the name of Jesus. We pray for Chomotso. Is it Chomotso? There we go. We pray for Chomotso. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing upon her life. Thank you, Lord, that in everything that she, she does and everything that she grows up in, that you will be with her, that your grace and peace will be multiplied over her, your blessing upon her. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you separate her for your purpose. Keep her and guide her as she grows. And we thank you, Lord, that she'll become all that you've called her to be. We pray for the family, Lord, your blessing upon them. We pray, Lord, that your favor be upon them. And we ask, Lord, that you give them wisdom, understanding. We thank you that everything they need has already been provided for. And we thank you lord wherever they go that your presence will surround them that you'll protect them and thank you lord that we can declare them highly favored and blessed of the lord in jesus name amen and amen god bless you thank you we have a fruitful church wow amen what's his name okay you can come a bit closer hello Let's pray. Lord, we pray for Techo Fatso, Lord. We thank you for your hand upon his life. Lord, we pray that right now that your spirit would separate him and sanctify him. Lord, for your perfect work in his life, we thank you that he will be a father of nations, that he, your blessing will come into fruition in his life, that wherever he goes, that he will be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. Lord, thank you that even at this young age, he might know you, your word, your ways, and that he will grow in wisdom and in stature. And thank you, Lord, that you keep him and protect him and anoint him in Jesus' name. We pray for all the family, Lord, and we thank you that you give them wisdom and guidance, Lord. We thank you that you bless them and that you give them direction, Lord, and you provide for their needs, Lord. Help them. In, even in tough situations to know what to do or know what to say. Thank you that no weapon formed against them will prosper, but their house will be a house of peace, a house where the glory of God um, is resident there in their, in their home, Lord. And we thank you that we can declare them highly favored and blessed of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Good morning. Musa, Wanga. All right. Hello. Looks excited to see me. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, we pray for Musa, Lord, and we thank you that we can dedicate him unto you this morning, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you'll separate him for your goodness, your grace, your purpose today by your Holy Spirit. Even at a young age, we thank you, Lord, for wisdom. We thank you, Lord, for uh, increase in knowing you lord and we thank you for an abundance of your blessing in the name of jesus as he grows that he will be fruitful and multiply replenish subdue and have dominion 
in the name of Jesus. We thank you that he is covered by your blood. Lord, we pray for the parents. We pray for the family. Thank you, Lord, for divine wisdom, for spiritual understanding, for guidance, for provision, for protection. And we thank you, Lord, that your grace and peace multiplies over their lives. And we ask you, Lord, to guide their every step. And we declare them this morning as a household, blessed and highly favored in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Congratulations. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are you happy to be at church this morning? Amen. Tell the person next to you, well done, you made it to church. Good to see you. I'm so proud of you. You surprised me. You are here. Amen. And um, we are so thankful that we can be here today. We have all of our campuses that are joining us this morning from all our different areas. Today we have Pulukwane joining us. We have Alberton. We have Nigel. Pretoria West. We have Atridgeville. Soshanguwe. We have Johannesburg. We have Ivory Park joining us. Let's give them a big hand. Welcome with us. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today. We know that you're going to be blessed. And uh, everyone in Centurion, welcome. And we are excited. Who was blessed at the conference last week? Anybody? Wasn't it amazing? Amen. If you weren't there, uh, feel guilty. And um, I'm just joking. The sermons will be available soon and you can also partake and have your own mini conference, but it was really incredible. And uh, we had Pastor Caesar, Pastor Emma Claudia. Um, we had Pastor Art Sepulveda from Hawaii. We had Apostle Collins, Apostle Mangaliso, and of course, Bishop Oriel as well. And the deal was that if Bishop Oriel comes to our conference, that Pastor Burden shall not have to go to his conference. So they are in the Philippines right now. We have a photo over there. They are sharing in the uh, arena there that is packed out. That is just women, by the way. They have women on the one day for the women's conference. And uh, they also have the men's conference uh, where Pastor Bird is sharing in Manila. Uh, but they will be back next week. So we keep them in our prayers. And um, we pray that God will use them and bring them back safely. Amen. So that means that you are stuck with me for today. Amen. So thank you for making me feel better. <laughs> we're going to get into the Word of God this morning, and we're going to continue along the lines of the theme that we had at the conference, which was light of the world. We're going to continue along those lines. God spoke to us, I think, very clearly at conference as a church and not just our church we had many churches represented at conference i think we had close to uh, 800 senior pastors representing different churches at conference and um, so it, the conference didn't just impact us but it's impacting churches throughout the nation and throughout africa and even in europe and america so we are thankful to the lord for that amen so today if you want to put a title to this message, it's dreams become reality. There's a few people excited about that. All right. Dreams become reality. And I want to read from the book of Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. It says, this is God speaking through the prophet to Israel. Arise, shine. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. So right now, I'm going to ordain everyone as a two-minute prophet. Are you ready? So you're going to turn to your neighbor, you're going to look them in the eye, and you're going to say this to them. Are you ready? Say it like your words are going to have power over their lives. Say to them, arise, arise. shine, shine. For, your for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. In the eyes, guys, in the eyes. Turn to the person on the other side. All right, you might not know them, but you've just become their prophet. So say to them, arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And if you believe that, shout amen. Hallelujah. Won't you put your hand on your heart and say this with me. Say with me, Holy Spirit, I commit this time to you. Let your word 
transform my life, change my heart, renew my mind, open my ears to hear the truth that sets me free, open my eyes to see all the things that you have prepared for me. I'm excited, I'm confident, because I know there's so much more that's waiting for me. If you believe that, say amen, amen. and amen. Hallelujah. And so today, we're going to be speaking about being people who don't remain in the domain of dreaming, but we move to a place where our dreams the dreams God has given us, the calling of God upon our lives, where the dreams become reality. At some point, your doctrine has to become a testimony. At some point, the things you talk about and the things you hope for have to become your experience because that's the type of God that we serve. Too many people are always talking about the future. You know, I grew up in church. I was born and I think I was like six days old and I was ready going to church. And it was the Father in the morning, Jesus in the afternoon, and the Holy Spirit in the evening. It was church all day. And you know what scripture I always hear all the time was Jeremiah 29, 11. People always declare it and it's a great scripture. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, plans to, to, to help you succeed. I've got a hope and a future for you. And you know what I've seen? That that scripture is great in the beginning. But at some point, the future has to become the present. Imagine you are 60, 70, 80, 90 years old, still saying, God has a future. No, at some point, the plan has to become reality. And the word of God for this morning is that now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time to arise. Now is the time to shine. Now is the time for the glory of the Lord is upon you. And we are trusting the Lord that now, not in the future, not far away, but now we will see a greater glory in our lives. We will see a greater glory in our families, a greater glory in our nation. And we believe that in South Africa and in Africa, the glory of the Lord is upon us. Who can say amen? At some point, we have to go from speaking to doing. At some point, our confession has to become action. At some point, our outer speech has to become action, application, and reality. Hallelujah. And now is that time. You know, I love the scripture in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17, where it says, it's a very simple verse, but it introduces you to the next phase of the gospel of Matthew. We had just learned about Jesus' birth, and now it says in chapter 4, verse 17, from that time, say with me, time. It says, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Do you know that Jesus only began his ministry at 30 years old? But when he turned 30, he had to begin. He had to start. And his ministry on day one didn't look like his ministry after three and a half years where he had touched everyone in the nation, multitudes of people, and raised up 12 world-changing apostles. But somewhere, there's an appointed time where you actually have to answer the call you keep telling us is on your life. Many Christians, the phone is ringing. You know that phone, the phone from heaven. God's on the line. And we get excited about the calling, but we kind of procrastinate the answering. I am called, okay? Answer the call. God has something great. I can feel it. I can feel it. God wants me to, to pray for the sick. God has got a ministry. I know he wants me to raise up a business that will empower other people and empower other businesses. You know, there's always the talk of what's coming, but at some point, the phone must stop ringing and the green button must be pressed and say, Lord, 
I'm ready, I'm stepping into it. And that is God's cry for us today. God is saying everything I've called you to do, everything I've called you to be, now it's time to stop talking about it. Now you have to become who I said you are going to be. You have to start doing what I've said you're gonna start doing. We're not gonna talk about the future anymore, but the dreams of God have to become a reality in your life. Can someone say amen? Amen. Say this with me. I am not a goal setter. I'm a goal getter. Say it again. I'm not a goal setter. I'm a goal getter. See, some people always set goals. I don't want to set goals. I want to get goals. I don't want to talk about it. I want to execute it. I want to see what God has in store for me. But it takes a different type of faith. It takes someone that says, okay, I understand. I'm going to be nervous. I'm going to be scared. Because when that moment comes, you have a choice to either postpone, procrastinate, cancel, or to step in it. No, I'm not ready. Who said that? Who said that? God is saying, now's the time to arise and shine. Now's the time. I don't know if you've ever had a meeting that was canceled and you were so happy. (laughs) Have you ever had something like that? Where there was a meeting that was was stressing you out, you were anxious, and, and maybe it was postponed, but just that extra 24 hours or that extra week brought so much relief. Who knows what I'm talking about? It's like, thank God that meeting was moved. Well, I've got bad news for you because you can't keep moving your calling. You can't keep rescheduling your purpose. Be careful that you don't postpone so much that it becomes canceled. God is saying, now's the time. Is it an extra burden? Yes. It's more responsibility. It's more work. It's more, it's more things you have to think about and, and care about. Is it more pressure? Of course it's pressure, but that's what's gonna make you stronger and that's what's gonna propel you into the things God has in store for you. Now is the time, hallelujah. I love what it says in Zechariah chapter four and verse 10. Zechariah four verse 10, through the prophet Zechariah, God is speaking to a man named Zerubbabel, all right? And he is the leader of Israel, bringing them back from exile. And I love what, it, what he says to him. This is not Pearson or Pastor Bird or Pastor Caesar speaking. This is the spirit of God. Listen to what he says. He says, do not despise these small beginnings. For the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Hallelujah. Some of us don't start because we know the start won't look like the end product we want. But God says to us, don't despise small beginnings. Even Jesus had to start by preaching to one person. Jesus had to start by praying for one person. Jesus had to start by going to one village. He says, don't despise small beginnings. And I love the next part. He says, the Lord rejoices when you begin. Oh, I want to be someone where God is in heaven, the Father is in heaven. He says, Gabriel, Gabriel, look, Pearson is starting. He actually believes in what I've called him to do. Look, look. He calls the other angel, Michael. He says, Michael, look, Pastor Marius has faith. He's starting to do what I've called him to do. Look, it's only one person, but he's starting. Do not despise small beginnings. God rejoices when you take a step of faith. God rejoices when you step out and you say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to trust God. I don't know how it's going to grow. I don't know how it's going to get better, but I'm going to listen because there's a spirit inside of me saying, go, it's time to go in Jesus name. So practically, some of us are sitting here tonight, sitting, sitting here this morning at the other campuses, watching online, and you know that this week is the time you need to start your ministry. What God has been speaking to you can no longer procrastinate it. Some of us here, God is speaking to us. We need to reach our health goals. No, we don't like to talk about that. I promise you, I don't even like that point and I wrote it. (laughs) Not about looking better, about being able to be there when you have grandchildren. Being able to do what God has called you to do and not being in and out of hospital because we don't look after ourselves. Some of us need to start and not quit on making sure we look after ourselves. But not later, we start now. 
Some of us here, God has been talking to you about starting a business for a while. Now's the time. Now's the time to start that business that God has been speaking to you about. Not to make money, but to glorify God. And to add to the kingdom and empower people. For some of our young Christian men this morning, you can just start. The small step would be asking her to go and on a date with you. And all the young ladies said... <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, I'm so blessed to be married for 10 years now with three kids. It's incredible. Hallelujah. I've got an incredible wife, a wonderful wife, amazing children. I'm so thankful to the Lord. But you know where I started? <laughs> when I was 18, it started by me going to ask her dad permission just to date her. Because that's someone's daughter. I don't just do what I want without permission. And my, my father-in-law used to be a high executive. Now he's pastoring. He retired, took his retirement money and built a church in the village in Limpopo. But he used to be a high up executive in Telcom. And he worked on the 16th floor in Telcom Towers in Pretoria. That was the longest elevator ride <laughs> of my existence. And I said, sir, I'm here to see. Why are you here? <laughs> You're shaking. I said, I want to ask you if you give me permission to date your daughter. Woo. One hour later, okay, it's fine. <laughs> you will do, you will do, all right. First, he had to overcome the fact that I was white and uh, asking, are you going to pay La Bola? How are we going to do this? I'm like, yeah, no. Thank you, Jesus. But that was a small step that led me to 10 wonderful years of marriage so far and three amazing children, but it's a small beginning. <laughs> and I'm not talking to people under 18 here. <laughs> they have no business dating in high school, for what? Some of us here, God is saying it's time. I've been speaking to you about filling out that application for adoption. I've been speaking to you about it. Now is the time. I've been speaking to you about starting your cell group. Now is the time. I've been speaking to you about giving that offering. Some of us need to give that offering, whatever it might be. What unlocked the covenant that Abraham had? It was when he was willing to offer his son Isaac. God tested his faith through an offering to unlock his covenant blessing. Some of us, God wants us to give something. You know it's on your heart. You need to give it. Whatever it might be, to wherever it might be. Hallelujah. Some of us, we need to take a step of faith and buy that house and conquer that. Some amens. Some of us need to send those CVs out to those companies. Some of us need to start, here's where your small step is, moving past the trauma of your past and starting a new life and conquering in Jesus' name. Some of us, it's serving at church. One of the people in my team at conference, when we were talking about what God did at conference, God started working in his life before any session started, just by him, a big business person uh, in his suit and his nice clothes, but he decided, no, I'm going to help in the parking team. People won't know my net worth, but I'll stand in the dust while they rude to me, even though they're Christians, and I'll show them where to park. And he says, as he decided just to start in serving in a humble place, it unlocked something in his life, and all of a sudden, his kids want to start serving at church as well. Because they saw, why is dad there in a yellow jacket doing parking? He doesn't need to do that, but it was an example, but it, he knew it was on his heart. Some of us need to start serving in places, even if they are technically below our position. Can I get an amen? amen? Now is the time. It's time to get going. It's time to stop procrastinating. And that is the word. And I want to give you three things this morning. The word, the warning, and the way. That is the word to arise and shine. The warning, Jesus gives us a warning. And he clearly shows us what stops us from rising. You know, my wife loves baking all the time. And it's so fascinating to me when you bake a cake, how it starts on a ground, uh, on a foundation level. And when you put it in the heat, it starts rising. 
And some of us, our lives right now, we're still only in the ground level. And God has got three levels, seven levels, however many layers he has in store for you. But there's something in scripture that Jesus warns us about that says this will pre pre prevent you from rising the way you should. Every time you try, you try rise and it just fails. Nothing is as bad as when I see my wife's cake not rise. <laughs> then I stay away from her for a while. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Are you hearing? And that's revealed to us in Luke chapter 12 and verse 1. Jesus says, in the meantime, it says, when an innumerable multitude of people had gathered together, he began to say to his disciples, listen to this, he says, beware the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor nothing hidden that will not be known. Whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have spoken in inner rooms will be proclaimed on housetops. And so the warning for us today is yes, we're gonna see the glory of God. Yes, we're gonna rise like never before as the church in this nation. But the warning from Jesus himself is that remember, the enemy or the deterrent of the glory of God is hypocrisy. What is hypocrisy? It's when you pretend on the outside something that you aren't on the inside. And even in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 8, before in verse 9 we receive the Lord's prayer, Jesus says, don't be like them, the hypocrites. It's a warning to us because God's glory cannot be on you if you are not honest and pure of heart. And we have to be careful. God isn't looking for you to have it all together and to be perfect right now. It's not about being perfect, but it's about not pretending. Because some people always seem holy on the outside, but they are unholy on the inside. And no matter how hard you try rise, no matter how hard you try live in the fullness of the glory of God, it will always come back down because the leaven of the Pharisees, hypocrisy, even a little bit, Galatians 5 verse 9 says, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Just a bit of hypocrisy and deceitfulness and not being true in your heart will bring everything down. And what's scary is that he says, and it will be exposed. You will be exposed in your marriage if it's not true in your heart. You'll be exposed in your business if it's not true in your heart. But he's, he's warning us. It's not condemnation. It's saying, church, let's make sure that in our lives that we are honest. Even David in the Psalm of Repentance, Psalm 51, he says, as he's repenting, he says, Father, you desire truth on the inside to be honest about where we find ourselves. See, mercy can only be given to someone who admits their guilt. But mercy is not available to someone who pretends to be innocent. The glory of God will come upon you if we remain humble. As we step out that we don't pretend and put on a show and an appearance, but we are honest and transparent and pure and we get help where we need help and we are people of integrity. Lord, help me to be in private first before I try to be in public. Isn't that why Jesus said in the book of Matthew, he says, don't be like the hypocrites who only pray at church where people can see. But go into your room, shut the door and pray in private and the father who sees you in private will exalt you in public. Who gets exalted? Not those who do well publicly, but those who God sees privately. He says, when you fast, don't pull your face and tell everyone how hungry you are and leave your hair uncombed so that everyone can see you holy. He says, anoint your face, put on some deodorant, whatever you need to do. Don't show people you fasting and God who sees in private and God who sees your heart, he will exalt you. His glory will be upon you. So let's not be hypocrites where we are Christianity on the outside, but there's something not right on the inside. That's the warning. And lastly, I want to get to the way that we can make sure that we sustain the glory of God within our lives. So we have the word, 
it's time, it's time. Arise and shine, it's time. The glory is here, it's time. We have the warning, don't be hypocritical, don't pretend, be real, throw yourself at the feet of Jesus, go into your room, shut the door, and pray before the Lord where no one sees. And now, the third thing is the way. How can we ensure, what can we apply in our lives? Because what I've seen growing up in church, in my personal experience, watching our leaders, watching people in church, is that sometimes God ignites us with his glory, but our lifestyle allows that fire to go out. So we have moments of ignition, like at conference or like in church, or you have an encounter with God and the fire of God is on you and there's so much faith, but very quickly, the same lifestyle that had you in the mess, even though God takes you out the mess, if the lifestyle doesn't change, you'll be back to square one pretty quickly. Those are the cakes that do rise, but as soon as you take them out, then they go back down because there wasn't enough on the inside. Something wasn't right. And so I want to give you, we discussed this at conference, the five areas in our lives to prioritize, and we call this a lifestyle of glory. A lifestyle of glory. This is the way. The first thing we prioritize is God. And for every priority, I'm going to give an action word. Number one is God. And the word of action there is abiding. Say with me, abiding. In John chapter 15, we have four levels of fruitfulness. No fruit, little fruit, more fruit, and much fruit. People that produce no fruit, he says, branches that produce no fruit get cut off and thrown into the fire. Then you have little fruit. Then he says, but I'll prune you and you'll bear more fruit. Then I'll show you how to bear much fruit. The word in for much, the Greek word is mega. He says, this is how you glorify God, that your life produces mega fruit. But how do you produce much fruit? Well, John 15, verse 5 and 6, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you will bear much fruit. Abiding. Some people don't abide in the word, they visit the word. Some people attend church, they don't abide in his presence. John 8, 31, if you want to be my true disciples, you must abide in my word. We, everyone knows the next verse and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. But they don't live the prerequisite, which is verse 31. If you are a true disciple, you abide in my word. Let's get back into the presence of God. Let's get back into the word of God. Can I get an amen? amen. It's a lifestyle. We prioritize God. We abide. Number two is the priority is you. Because if you don't look after yourself, you hurt those around you. If you do not look after yourself, you are useless in the hand of God. You have to look after yourself spiritually by abiding. Then you have to look after yourself emotionally. You have to look after yourself mentally. You have to look after yourself physically as a temple of the Lord. You have to look after yourself. Amen? And the action word we have there is believing. Believing. Why? Because you have to have the audacity to believe that you are who God says you are and not what your emotions say you are, not what your family history says you are, not what your past says you are. You have to have the audacity to believe that if apples produce apples and oranges produce oranges, if my father is holy and I am his child, I am holy. And that maybe there are things in your life you've been struggling for years. You have to have the audacity to believe that you can overcome that right now. You have to have the audacity to believe that you can change and reach. And now instead of just setting goals, reaching those goals. You have to have the faith to trust God in your personal life. What are you going to reach and accomplish in this year? You have to believe. If you don't believe, you're going to be stuck in the same place. You have to look after yourself. Believe in the calling of God upon your life. Amen. Number three is family. Is family. The third priority of our lives is the, the, the verb there is creating a godly home. Creating a godly home. And you know, some people look at their marriages, they look at their family and they say, wow, there's so much work to do. But remember, small beginnings small beginnings, but we're not going to give up. We're not going to quit. See, Paul even writes to Timothy 
when Timothy becomes the pastor at the church in Ephesus, he says, Timothy, if people in, in church want to become leaders, that's good. They want God to use them. That's a noble desire. But they're not allowed to lead in the house of God if their house is out of order. And so what do we need to prioritize in our lives? Creating a godly home. Having a godly marriage. You can't have an adulterous heart and expect the glory of God upon your life. You can't be texting a woman inappropriately that's not your wife and expect the glory of God upon your life. You can't be speaking to a man and giving him attention that's not your husband and expect the glory of God upon your life. There has to be a priority. I love the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom that teaches us. He says, husbands, love the wife of your youth. Love them, enjoy them. Don't allow outside influences in your marriage. Don't allow things on the outside to creep in. He says, prioritize your marriage. Now people have very shocked faces. <laughs> Listen to what the Spirit of, this is not a condemning word. This is saying, if you want what's next, you got to get rid of some stuff. If you want what I have for you, you can't live the same way. You can't play around with adultery at whatever level that might be. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Be intentional with your children. Make sure that the standard at your home is the word of God, not secular education. Make sure that the entertainment coming out of Hollywood is not the, the major source of thinking in your home. Ensure that you create a godly home, have family cell, do your best, take one step, then another step. It's not all going to happen at the same time, but be determined to have a godly home in Jesus' name where you declare me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Take it to the next level, your marriage to the next level, your romance to the next level, your children spend time with them to the next level. Amen. Number four, the priority is ministry. Your purpose comes before your occupation. Your calling comes before your career. We are called to win souls and make disciples. The action word for ministry is discipling the nations. If you've been paying attention to the action words, it's A, B, C, D. Abiding, believing, creating a godly home, discipling the nations. Affecting the lives of others, not being self-centered but allowing God to use your life as an instrument. Some people think, I can't lead. I'm not ready. I'm not prepared. My friend, you don't need to be a thousand steps ahead to lead. You just need to be one step ahead. You already, by being at church, a step ahead of many people, and you can lead them by bringing them to church. No, I'm not ready to be a leader. No, you just need to be one step ahead. Amen? So prioritize your ministry. And number five is work. And please notice that though work is fifth and last, it's still on the list of priorities. We're not saying it's not important. It is very important. God's going to bless you in your workplace this year like never before. We believe it in Jesus' name. You're going to be, and the action word there is exemplifying excellence or exemplifying prosperity. You can't be the child of God, but the one that's always late for work and always gossiping. But we're going to be the example at work. We're going to be the light at work. We're going to make coffee for people who are technically lower on the hierarchy. Get me coffee. No, we make her coffee one day. And maybe we win a soul. Hallelujah. At work, let's bring glory to God. At work, let's be an example of Christ. And we know that God is going to make you more fruitful and more fruitful and more fruitful at work. You don't need to have the highest position in an organization to have the most influence. You just need the favor of God, the glory of God upon your life. And everybody said, amen. amen. Those are the five areas that if we have this lifestyle, we will sustain the glory of God. God, you, family, ministry work. Many people reverse it. And they have work first and God lost. And that's why they never sustain God's glory in their lives. But we're not going to be like that. Hallelujah. So what I want us to do today 
is we are going to make a commitment as a church to repent from procrastination because God's got so much more for you. And we're done talking about the future. It's time that the future becomes the present in our lives, in Jesus' name. Are you ready for that? So the word, arise and shine. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord is upon you. The warning, don't be hypocritical. Be pure of heart. The way, prioritize right according to scripture. And you will sustain the glory of God upon your life. And so I want us to pray. Could we please stand to our feet? And I want you just to right now have in your heart the things that you know you need to commit to God that you're going to do this week, this week, not next year. You're going to take a small step. It's an application. It's a phone call. It's a whatever it might be. You're going to take a step and you're going to start. And there we are. I want you just to pray and say this with me. Say with me, Lord, help me. I know you've called me. I know you have great things in store for me. And I repent for postponing, for procrastinating because of fear. But today I decide I'm going to start. I'm going to step into my calling. I'm going to be who you've called me to be. And in your own words there, just thank the Lord. He's going to help you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to guide you. It might be scary, but he's going to give you grace in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want to pray with you this morning as we keep our eyes closed. If you are here and you've never given your life to Jesus, I want to pray with you. That's your first step today. That's your new beginning today is that you know your life is not right with God. You know that you are not born again. The Spirit of God is not in you. Maybe you've gone to church. Maybe you know about God. Maybe you even prayed when you got into trouble. But you know your life is not surrendered to Jesus. And today you say, I want to become a child of God. If that is you, I want to pray with you. And I'm going to ask you, when I count to three, you're going to lift up your hand to say, I want to pray that prayer. I want to make that decision. Today's the day. I decided to follow Jesus. I leave my life of sin, my own ways, my own plans. And today I come to Jesus and I ask him for forgiveness, for restoration. And I ask him to help me be a child of God. And if that is you with no one looking around and you say, I want to make that decision. I want you to quickly lift up your hand right now with no one looking. One, two, three, put it up high. And we're going to pray together today. I see all those hands. Thank you, thank you, thank you. On the side, in the middle, at the back. Thank you. At the other campuses, if you've raised your hand, thank you so much. You can put your hands down. And I want to encourage you, if you are backslidden, you know what I'm talking about. You also need to be included in this prayer. Don't waste any more time, but come back to the Lord today. Dedicate your life today. Now is the word for today. Don't let go of this opportunity. There's a struggle in your heart. That's God speaking to you. Don't reject him. But answer the call. Take a bold step and say, today, I recommit my life. I want to be, I want the spirit of God resurrected in my life. And so I'm going to ask you, if that is you, and you want to join those who've already lifted up their hands and say, I want to pray that prayer. I want to make that decision. I want to come back to Jesus. If that is you, with no one looking around, quickly lift up your hand. One, two, three, put it up high. We're going to pray together. I see all those hands. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. I see all those hands. You can put your hands down. I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. If you lifted up your hand, I want to pray with you personally. I want you to take a bold step. And I want you to quickly right now, step out of your chair, out the aisle. Come stand with me in front. We're going to pray. If you lifted up your hand, quickly come, 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 come. Let's give him a big hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on.
want you to pray this with me. We're all going to pray together. Just close your eyes. Watching online at all the campuses. Say with me, Jesus, here I am. I need you in my life. And right now, I decide to surrender all that I am to you. Come into my life, Lord. Change me. Forgive me from all my sin. Fill me with your spirit. And I thank you, Lord, that today I can say, I am a child of God. I am born again, a new life, a new beginning. In Jesus' name, if you believe that, shout amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're so proud of you. If you're in front, there's people behind you. They're just going to speak to you for two minutes as I close the service. And everyone watching online, go to the commit button on my3c.tv. Click on it. Fill in your details. If you said that prayer, we're going to pray with you. Church, I'm going to release you. Won't you lift up your hands? Lord, thank you for every person that is here today. We bless them in your name. May your peace and your grace be multiplied over their lives. Be fruitful and multiply in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen church god bless you we'll see you next week if you're right in front you can just turn around someone's going to speak to you thank you
And that's how we wrap up today's sermon and with an awesome song of praise. We're going to praise his name until the end of days and the whole world knows his name. And on that note, we just want to say thank you so much to Pastor Pearson Pretorius for that powerful word. We are activated to go and reach those dreams. We are not uh, goal setters. We are goal uh, getters. And that's what we're going to be doing in this week, getting all those goals starting and not despite any uh, small beginnings, but going forward and conquering the way that Jesus Christ has uh, wanted us to conquer. And I want to encourage you to further connect with us. Uh, you can also listen to the sermon again uh, on our YouTube page. Uh, you can visit at Bert Pretorius and go and listen to that there. And uh, please make sure that you do that. And uh, in and through all things, make sure that uh, you are uh, connected to our live, live broadcast. We also have our prayer meetings that are taking place. Uh, during the week. Uh, this week we are doing the men's prayer on Wednesday and that is at uh, 5 a.m. So from 5 till 6 a.m. on a Wednesday we're going to be praying with Pastor Bert Pretorius and then we will also continue with our prayer meetings for the ladies the next week because this week we've got our prayer mantle taking place on Friday at 7 p.m. So please make sure that you are there with all of the ladies there um, and it is a, a meeting that really is sparked some real revival last year in our It's a Girl Thing network as the ladies really took to prayer um, all of the issues that we were facing as a nation and uh, as well as families uh, there, there, there of. So please make sure that you are involved at the prayer mantle and we will see you there on Friday at 7 p.m. Now to connect with us, we want to encourage you to do so on our website, my3c.tv. There's also a link that is on our social media chat so if you are on Facebook and on YouTube and you're joining us via those platforms uh, just look at that link press uh, that link and it will take you straight through to the connect page on the website where you can fill out your details and we can connect with you and this is what we do even in the auditoriums as someone gives their lives to Jesus we don't take that lightly I mean the whole of heaven celebrates when just one uh, person comes back to Christ and is part of the family of Christ so there's a huge responsibility that we have even as a church to make sure that that person belongs to a family belongs to a body a community of believers that they can grow and uh, have the ministry appropriate for where they are at to be ignited so that they too can be the light of the world that's what God has called us to be and today we're going to arise and shine um, for the glory of God is upon us and let's go out and conquer in this week we've still got a couple of minutes to spend with you we'll chat uh, to a uh, some families who are outside who are with Sfiso. Uh, we'll play some games there where we are uh, just to lighten it up as well. And then we will be saying goodbye at 12 p.m. But it's just goodbye for now because the 3C Church is continuing with our afternoon services. We've got the Vault Tux um, taking place at 3, 5, uh, 3 uh, p.m. as well as at 4.30 p.m. Then we've got the Vault Vits that's taking place at 6 p.m. We also have the Vault TUT that takes place at 4 p.m. as well as the Vault University of Limpopo as well. Um, in this afternoon. So please make sure that if you've got any youth that are there, and as you can see during the news as well, there's many protests that are still happening, but uh, the most important thing that we need as young people, even uh, in this nation, is we need Jesus. We need the presence of God within our lives. So let's make sure that we are, 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 are parat and that we are there uh, this afternoon at all of the vault uh, uh, services for the university students. We've continued again with with our Vault Live services and because it is prayer mantle we're still going to be continuing with the Vault Live and the men are going to be praying and really seeking the face of the Lord while the women are on the uh, prayer mantle so please make sure that uh, you don't uh, inhibit your young people from coming to the presence of God coming to church getting equipped and uh, this is what we need they're the leaders of today leaders in their primary schools their high schools their varsities their work environments wherever God has placed them that's where he 
has called them and uh, we're so excited and encouraged by that. No, uh, please continue to pray for our senior pastors, Pastor Bird and Pastor Shane. They're currently in the Philippines um, and they were doing the women's conference and the men's conference uh, respectively and you saw during the sermon um, that uh, those pictures of just the, uh, the, the amount of people that were there during that time and the Lord really moved supernaturally. You can follow our pastors at Bert and at Pastor Shane Pretorius uh, on Facebook, YouTube as well as uh, Instagram and uh, there and Twitter. Yes, they're also there and there you can see all the updates of what the Lord is using them for in the nations of the earth. We really do have the best pastors in the world. Now we also continuing with our training this week. We've got our destiny training taking place at 7 p.m. and that will be on Thursday, right? And uh, then we're also starting with Plan 40. And uh, this is a, a, a specific leadership training that is preparing um, leaders to take the responsibility for other people. And that's going to be a 30-minute session um, with your zone pastor. So please make sure you get to them in this week. It could be on any one of those specific days. Uh, it will definitely not be on Thursday at 7 p.m. It might be before then or after then. So we've got to make sure that we do you, uh, and, and we are involved in that uh, because we are really anticipating uh, a tremendous year of training, kickstarting off with our life class, and that's taking place about six weeks from now, so the 12th of April, that's where we are at. And remember, we also, uh, this uh, this this uh, month is also the month of Easter, uh, it's also the month uh, where we are kickstarting our prayer mantle, and it's going to be a great, great uh, March 2023, just after we've had our G12 annual conference. And speaking more about conferences, uh, there's uh, more conferences coming up. We've got the youth conference, 16 to 17 June. We've also got the women's conference, 8 to 9 September. And uh, that's going to be taking place. So from the 31st of March, the early bird tickets will be done and dusted. But for now, you can still register for that women's conference. It's 200 Rand, which is 20% off um, for your tickets. And I know you're going to be blessed. Best. Join us for our annual It's a Girl Thing conference on the 8th to the 9th of September 2023. Hosted by Pastor Shane Pretorius at the Moraleta Church in Swane. With guest speakers, Pastor Geraldine Bellano, Pastor Johanna Cassianos, Pastor John Jenkins, First Lady Trina Jenkins, and joining us live, Grammy Award-winning artist, C.C. Wynand. There is a 20% discount for those who register by the end of February. Register today on my3c.tv. All right, what an incredible service here today. And it has been hot, not just physically, but the word has been incredible. And you know what's great? Baby dedication is uh, what the service was all about. And it's just really been incredible to have babies being dedicated. I'm standing here with a family who has brought their family members and relatives to see this little beautiful one getting dedicated today. Dad, how does it feel for you getting your child dedicated unto the Lord? Very, very exciting. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. What, what, what does it uh, mean to you to, to bring them to the Lord? Uh, as we heard there, that they can't do it by themselves. Um, yes, um, I do. It means everything to me. Yeah. I would also love for her to grow up the way I grew up. Yes. Um, we centered around the Word of God. Yeah. So that's really the path that we're choosing for her. That's Thank really you. powerful. That's really powerful. Mom, isn't it great to see the family coming here to support you as you get your child dedicated? What does it mean for you as a mom? It means everything. I'm so excited and I'm happy for her that she's going to start her journey knowing God. And when she looks back on this day, she'll be really, really grateful. Yes. Yeah. That's really powerful. That's really powerful. And how long have you the church and how has the church helped you as a family? And uh, how have you grown in the Lord? Um, I think a little over a year, isn't it, babe? Yes, a little over a year. So um, we've, we've, we've been attending Sal with Johnny and we've been um, coming to church and receiving the word of God. And it, is, it has inspired us to grow and not only just to grow, but also tell people more about Christ. So, yeah, I'm so grateful. Wonderful. Tell us who is here with you. The whole family is here. Rakadi, can you introduce everybody? This is a big, big family. Um, if I'm the, uh, the baby's aunt, yeah, yeah, I'm excited, we're excited to be here, yes. 
Was it incredible to see her getting dedicated and how does that make you feel? No, uh, awesome. Uh, it was exciting, wonderful. We were we are happy as a family that the pastor dedicated. You can see she's also happy. She feels it. It's a warm space. It's a nice place, and we pray that um, uh, you continue to nurture her in this environment. We are very excited. Yeah. Please introduce the family to us, or do you want to introduce yourselves? There, there's the camera for you. You are you are live on YouTube to all the world. Please introduce yourselves. Hello, my name is Itimeling Mabasa. I am an aunt. To Auntie is here seeing her niece getting dedicated unto the Lord. Amen. Afternoon, everyone. My name is Larata Sueza. I'm Auntie to Baby Boabo. Oh, man, there's so many aunts here. So many aunts for you, baby. That's really wonderful. Hi, my name is Shelton Sueza. I'm the uncle to Baby Boabo. Thank you. Uncle is also here. The Malumes are here. <laughs> Greetings, another Malume. Matimba uh, Mabasa. He wants to say hi. Yeah. <laughs> Big boys here, and we're so excited. This whole family is here. We've got the boys who are growing up in the Lord. Yes. Do you love Jesus? Yes, I love Jesus. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And we love, tell the people over there, all right, greet them, wave to them. And that's what it's all about, family serving the Lord. And we're so excited for this journey that you're going to take. We're going to go to the visitor's area. We're going to have some refreshments, all right, and uh, enjoy and celebrate this beautiful gift. I, I know there was a certificate. Is it there? All right, let's show the people there. There it is, an awesome certificate of dedication showing that baby Vuavo was dedicated today on the 5th of March 2023 unto the Lord and we are so so blessed and that's what 3C is all about it's all about family you've got to come to church with your family don't leave your family behind as you serve the Lord it's all about serving the Lord as a family together as the Bible says as for me and my house we will serve the Lord and a praying family a family that prays together stays together and that's who we are we are the light of the world and we are just celebrating today and we're so so excited god is here and god is moving and so we're gonna go over to the visitors area and just have some refreshments as families and enjoy this time together there's more to come there's more to come and uh family can i ask where do you come from where were you all born and raised and uh are you are you proudly zulu or proudly Ndebele or proudly venda venda all of us <laughs> proudly venda Proudly Venda, won't you just say, tell the people out there in Venda, you know, how important it is to come to church and tell them that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, please. There you have it, and I know the subtitles are there. If you didn't understand, there's auto subtitles there on YouTube. But basically she said that, you know what, it's great to come to church. You need to come to church with your family. And we are so, so blessed. Right, family? Yes. All right. Everyone say, light of the world. Thank you so much, Fiso. What a powerful family that you have there. And uh, we're going to speak a bit more about the conferences that are coming up. And uh, won't you introduce yourself, Ms. Munyani, to all of the people that are watching us right now. Hello, everyone. My name is Hare Pamanyane, and yeah, it's good to be here. Oh, wonderful. You're usually behind the camera, and today you are in front of it. And let's talk about the conferences that are coming up. What's your expectation for the youth conference as well as the women's conference taking place this year? You know what, Pastor Z, I am extremely excited for the coming conferences and I'm especially excited about the 30% discount that we have going on for the um, AMG Sets Apart Youth Conference. I'm so excited and um, literally... Just a short testimony after the G12 conference, you know, all the girls were extremely excited and were like, you know what, 
we're registering for AMG wow, right now, wow, you know, wow. so just a few of them are already registered. So we're extremely excited. And then um, for September, we have the Women's Conference coming up, you know, with our very own CC Winans, and I'm mm. extremely excited for that. And yeah, even with that conference, I'm already registered. My mom just texted me. She's like, girl, I registered you. I'm like, let's go. <laughs> you know, I'm really, really expectant. Now, that's great. And what she's talking about is the early bird tickets, yes? Mm. Right. So it's 30% off for the AMG Youth Conference and 20% off up until the 31st of March. Now, um, from last year, you were in the In Pursuit program. And uh, what has that done for you to prepare you for what you're going to be doing this year? All right. So um, this year I am studying. Um, and I think really what the In Pursuit program has done for me is just um, form that firm foundation, you know, in my relationship with Christ. I think it's so easy to just be swayed by everything that's going on if you aren't very um, convicted and just strong in your faith. So really In Pursuit did that for me. It was just so important for me to take that time out during the year and just be surrounded by um, world changes, you know, so that even now, now, um, as I am out, you know, I'm the influence and I'm not being influenced. That's very important. Yeah, that's powerful. Don't be influenced. You must be the influencer. Yes. Right. I remember Pastor Bird preached something about that. Now, as a young person, um, a young woman as well, um, what's the importance of serving God at your age now? Because, you know, sometimes you think to yourself, you know, church is for old people. Mm -hmm. And what have you experienced and what can you share with any young person that might be thinking, I'm coming to church only because my parents want me to be here and I don't really really want to do this until I'm a certain age. Mm. Um, you know what? I think that um, people only... I think that just going to church with your family and um, all of that is really religion, but it's only until you have a personal relationship with God and even a, at a young age where you just enjoy it you know it doesn't even feel like an obligation but it's just that you're at a place where you understand that this is the right place for me and because you have a personal relationship with God you're able to continue walking in purpose so you know even though we are young and <laughs> all of that I think that really if you don't believe in something you're going to believe in anything you know and I think it's really really important that at a young age you um you start cultivating your relationship with God so that, um, yeah, then you can conquer. Yeah, no, that's great. That's awesome. And uh, tell us a bit about your, your ministry and what the Lord is doing there and where specifically are you building the house of God? All right. So I am involved in Tux um, as well as Tembisa. Um, yeah, and those are the my two main areas that I'm involved in. I'm currently also getting involved in Jobik since I currently live there now. So yeah, it is a bit of a distance to get here. <laughs> but um, yeah, those are the areas that I'm involved in. And it's really beautiful to see God work and move even in the varsities, you know, even in um, the high school areas, you know, Tembisa, not a lot of them are fully exposed to what it's like to have a relationship with God. So it's really beautiful to see them want that for themselves. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. That's encouraging. And uh, what are your, what, are, what as Pastor Pearson preached today, uh, it's time, right? Mm. It's time. And which, which it's time is really for you that you're saying, you know what, after this, I'm about to arise and shine because, you know, the, 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 the glory of God is upon me. Yeah. You know what? Um, I think it's time for me to start a cell. I'm currently schooling at Vega. Okay. And, you know, not everyone there is really about, you know, Jesus. But I am convicted to really go there and make um, a difference. And I think it's also time for me to be more... Um, open and outspoken about my faith in Christ, even on my social media. I think that's a beautiful platform to draw people closer to God. So I'm excited to use that to really bring people to God's kingdom. That's yeah. very encouraging. And thank you so much for your time. Um, all the best for the rest of the afternoon and uh, what the Lord has called you for in this year. And uh, this is one of the young girls that has completed IP and is also registered for the youth conference and women's conference. You can do that too.
Join the Vault Youth Conference on the 16th to the 17th of June, 2023 at the Moraletta Church in Tuane. Register today on my3c.tv. AMG Conference is coming up. It is called, what is it titled? Who knows? Step up. Who knows what it's titled? Youth Conference. Youth Conference. No, it's not titled Youth Conference. What is the theme of the AMG Youth Conference? It's called? Uh, give, me, give you a hint. Romans 12 verse 2. <laughs> All right, give us the date. What date is it? 17th of June. One point to this team, 16th and 17th of June. And can you guess one guest who's going to be there? Um, mm, they were there last year. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Um, um, Pastor Lau, I think. Uh huh. Pastor Lau, two points to this team. Uh, can you guess which country is Pastor Lau from? Oh, um, Colombia. Colombia. Ah, uh, close. That's his wife. Uh, which country is Pastor Lau from? <laughs> America. America, no. Um, it's a little bit lower than America. Keep Brazil. guessing. Brazil. Brazil! Three points to this team. Come on, team. Come on, girls. Come on, step it up. All right, cool. So, Pastor Lau is coming. He's from Brazil. His wife is from Colombia. What's the name of his wife? Her name is also in the Bible. Maria. Mary. Mary? No. Um, Mary is not her name. <laughs> Pastor Sarah. Pastor Sarah Castellanos. Uh, she is coming and it's going to be awesome, awesome, awesome. Four points to this team. All right. We need to help these, this team. All right. Can you guys help on the YouTube? Help this team. All right. So we're going to play a game called Finish the Lyrics. All right. And they got to finish the lyrics as I uh, exercise my choir voice. Okay. Here we go. My choir voice is up. My, uh, my choir voice is up and I'm going to sing and then you guys are going to finish the lyrics. Here's the song. Giabonga Baba. Giabonga Ngosi. Ngosi, uh, no. Giabonga Moya. Umusheki. There we go. Well done. You got one point. Well done to you guys. Let's see uh, if you guys can keep up with them, all right? To those who believe, we are the victory. Sin has lost power all through his blood. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They got five points now. Five to one. That is really incredible. Well done. Well done. Okay. Um, we want to see your glory for nations. For more. All right. All right. For you. Okay, I should give you two points for this one because you kept going a little bit longer. All right? That's awesome. That's Yetla Moya. All right, this one is going to be difficult, okay? Ooh. Mm, mm, mm. You mend what is broken and make me whole with the precious blood. You cleanse my heart. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. It's the great exchange. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Okay, let's 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 try step it up a little bit for our generation, all right? Okay? <laughs> all right. Satan <laughs> Vele. Yeah, it's Jesulifika. Jesulifika. Well done, well done. Okay, well done. You got that one. I'll give you one point there. It's six to one. All right? Here's the next one. It was perfect love from the start. From the start. <laughs> from the store, from the store, or from the start? From the store or from the start? Oh, from the start. Okay, well done, well done. Seven to two. Seven to two. Let's, let's, should we make it a little bit more difficult? Okay. Huh? No? Yes? Oh, man. This one is difficult. Okay. Yo. Ali Kweline. Ali Kweline. 
Ali Kwikama Eli Se Jengela Ko. That's Kayam Tetwa. All right, well done to you guys. Clearly, you are just leading this one. They're just leaving you guys behind. But well done. Seven to two. Congratulations to you, our winners, Shine. All right, shine. make sure you are at the Shine Baby Shine. Everyone say Shine Baby Shine. Shine Baby Shine. Yep, Shine Baby Shine. That is the theme for uh, this year's uh, uh, G12 Network, uh, the light of the world. We are the light of the world, and we will shine ever so bright. With this word, we're continuing and making sure that we arise and do what God has called us to do, where he has called us to be, and we are so thankful and grateful to be able to have spent this time with you this morning here at 3C Church. It's time for us to say goodbye and love and leave you um, uh, to continue uh, with your day-to-day -day, uh, activities here on a Sunday and to conquer in this week. But next time we will meet will be again uh, on Sunday morning next week uh, and uh, that will be at 7 a.m. where we kickstart our live program where we are at. And we're so encouraged uh, to be able to be with you and uh, we pray God's blessing over your life his hand may be upon you in all things and we trust and hope that you've had a blessed 3c live experience on behalf of all the team and all the volunteers and everyone that makes this show possible we want to wish you well and uh, wish you a blessed sunday further god bless you and we will see you next week see that everything we do, as far as the gathering of the saints are concerned, carries a certain anointing that breaks certain yokes. So there's certain meetings that don't give you breakthrough in certain places within your life. There are meetings designed to break certain yokes within your life. There's a corporate anointing that's bringing breakthrough, that's bringing wisdom, that's, that's bringing direction, that's bringing resolve to your life for this week, which you would not have had if you were not attending. Why? Because there's something that God wants to do. I know what God's going to do this weekend. Get your spouse there, get your children there, get your grandchildren there. God's gonna do a work within their life.